everybody how are you god bless you i know it's been a while since i've uh really done any videos other than uh greek on this channel so i apologize but uh actually um uh, i don't know why i've waited so long to announce this but uh i know some of my friends already through facebook and stuff already know and and otherwise but um actually i've decided to uh uh well back starting april 1st i'll transition from working a full-time employee at my request um, to uh, become a contractor so I can spend less time you know doing you know things uh, for this world and more for the kingdom of God and stuff so uh, so I've kind of been working part-time as a result which is a blessing to have that ability and then other things going on where uh, the plant here in Florida is closing and they're moving everything up to Ohio and uh, which actually is nice that for those few of us that um, remain in the software department um, that we actually work from home so that's a blessing so so that happened prior to me um, making this decision that I'm actually I guess I don't know not to be over dramatic but just announcing that um, uh, I basically will be attending for a one-year certificate program in Jerusalem with, uh, I mean, the website is polisjerusalem.org, but basically it's Polis Institute. And uh, so, yeah, I've been, I've taken some classes with them, um, 2016, summer 2016 and summer 2017. I went to Rome and, um, you know, I've been meeting with a graduate there that actually the program I'm getting ready to go do. Um, I've been met, meeting with uh, Rogelio Toledo, got a whole playlist of our videos where we, practice uh, going through different ancient Greek texts, whether it's uh, the New Testament or whether it's uh, Pelagius Josephus or uh, ancient early Christian writings, Didache, Second Clement, um, you know, which are early second century writings, late first century. Um, and so the program that, you know, he's now, he's been teaching me since last September. So that's the program I'm going to do in Jerusalem. And it'll primarily be focused on Greek so with what I've already accomplished in Greek and then just really taking it further uh, to really better uh, try to perfect the craft there I guess you could say um, but also I'll be taking uh, biblical Hebrew um, I've been doing getting a jump on it the last couple of weeks learning the alphabet and uh, learn some simple grammar and stuff and, yeah, the, the alphabet is quite a challenge. Uh, 22 letters in the alphabet, it's all consonants. And then I guess uh, somewhere along the way, the Masoretes uh, created a, a vowel system that instead of them actually disrupting all the ancient manuscripts and changing things, they just basically surround all those letters with different types of dots and dashes, almost like Morse code or something, <laughs> that um, indicate where certain vowel sounds are. They're very similar to that vowel sounds in English in some respects and stuff so but anyway i've been looking at that and seeing uh you know there's some differences between modern hebrew and biblical hebrew and stuff but so i'll be taking in the fall uh, biblical hebrew one and in the spring he biblical hebrew two and uh, my plan is i won't know until i actually sit with my advisor um in early september but my plan is to uh go all the way to uh, ancient greek six so that I would take uh, what I've already taken before, that's Greek 1 and 2, um, and that'll be a refresher, I'll be doing that. Um, starting off in September, the month of September, they got an immersion uh, course for that. And uh, so then, and then Greek 3 and Greek 5 is my plan for the fall, and then Greek uh, 4 and Greek 6 uh, for, the, for the spring and stuff, and then the spring would finish up in uh, June, end of June I think so so anyway I'm pretty excited about that I mean I know in the last couple of years um, just my life has been so focused on the pursuit of truth the true gospel what's the scriptures teach what's the early church teach uh, get underneath the, the you know uninspired English translators and take a closer look at all these words and and the grammar and the text and try to understand you know, any nuances that um, would help me 
confirm the early Christian view and uh, uh, and just see some things because as I've various if you've looked at a lot of videos on my channel um, I just see like for instance whether it's Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox I see the early church first couple of centuries um, in some respects um, just teaching fairly in some cases significantly different things um, not in all cases there's some common ground for sure but um, and, and very significant in some regards to where it's it's a deal breaker I mean you know so anyway it's in a lot of my videos I've talked about different things so um, so that's what's you know inspired me to to do this and stuff so all right so continuing on here the <laughs> dog barking so I pause the video but um, so so yeah I mean just made some really radical changes in my life uh, I'm not sure if I other than the introduction video um, when you first come to my channel have I talked too much about my quote-unquote testimony as people call it um, uh, so I kind of do talk a little bit about there but ever since 2009 where I made this radical turn from from the world um, where almost 10 years prior to that was where I was in this church that to some degree had some things on straight but some other things that really stumbled me and uh, I ended up and, and they were one of the many ones out there so many um, so many that make you think that if you're not in their organization that you're not a Christian so they were one of those and so when I saw that I just couldn't I couldn't deal with some of the weirdness in the church anymore in the quote unquote church um, uh, it just made me vulnerable to get pulled back into my old life um, you know so so I did that and then a couple years later got married and and then five years later when all of a sudden I started making this radical turn going back after God within about a year year and a half increasingly towards that end of that period somewhere along the way I just started getting hints of wondering if because I was married to somebody that was twice married before. I'd never been married. I was just super, super immoral before that. Um, but could I be living in adultery is the uh, kind of draft conclusion I was, I was concerned about. And as I pursued that eventually after many, many, many months of really digging the scriptures and then even hearing what the early church had to say, and that was kind of the beginning um, front end of where I started really getting into what the early church taught and stuff so that would have been around 2010 2011 so when I actually you know made the decision to get out of out of adultery and basically I just decided just to live you know like Matthew 19 11 and 12 Jesus talks about three types of eunuchs those that are born that way those that are forced to be that way because people do involuntary surgery on them ouch and uh, against their will and then the third one was Jesus is really recommending he says anyone that can accept this should accept this there's a voluntary eunuch somebody that would live a chaste life that if anybody's really paying attention in 1 Corinthians 7 throughout the whole chapter Paul keeps making mentions of that he's talking about women and men talking about virgins and widows and about them you know pledging themselves to uh, not that he uses the word pledge but that idea uh, committing themselves to staying chaste as as a voluntary eunuch just like Jesus talked about in Matthew 19 11 and 12 so anyway so I I've chosen to do that and just really focus and I've done so many different things gone through so many different chapters of my life since then which what is that like seven, eight, nine years, depending on where you pick the starting point, um, but 10 years since 2009 when I turned. So so now here I am going to Israel um, for a year. And, and the last couple of years, because I'm really careful with how I spend my money so I can do more to help the poor, um, not so much in this country, although if somebody needed help, I mean, I do, but there's just such greater needs in third world countries and stuff. So that's a lot of where my focus is and stuff. So. So I live a pretty simple life. I live in a small little apartment, eat very simply, 
um, buy food. I don't even eat in restaurants anymore. I've kind of transitioned. Um, I'm not saying it never go to a restaurant. I mean, I'm leaving at an airport, you know, on Monday. I guarantee you I'll be eating in restaurants and the airport and stuff. But I'm just saying just as a general rule, I try to be very frugal so I can do more to help the poor because this is how Jesus teaches. And uh, I think most of Christendom looks at it as if it's totally optional. If you just want to get bonus rewards, it has nothing to do with whether you're going to have the kingdom or not. And if you've watched it very many of my videos, some of them I'm just talking about like I am now, and some of them I'm actually presenting, you know, quotes in the early church or scriptures or whatever, especially a lot of things in the Gospels. Jesus talks about stuff so much, especially in the Gospel of Luke. So anyway, just a lot of radical things in my life uh, to just focus on it. And really the point of this channel is to inspire other people to wake up and see what really matters in this life. Why are we here? There's only a reason why we're here. One reason is, is with God's grace and God's mercy. Two different things. Grace, Titus 2, 11 and 12, is a teacher that trains us to say no to the things that God hates and, and yes to the things that God loves. So it's a teacher and a trainer. But mercy is an allowance, you know, not allowance to continue once you have knowledge. And then Hebrews 10, 26 says, hey, there's no sacrifice for sins left, but only fear for expectation of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. So it's not that, it's not that. And Paul talks about that in, in Romans as he's explaining grace. You know, he kind of talks similarly and he has to slam on the brakes every once in a while. And he's like, Romans chapter 6, verse 1, be one place. So he's like, just got done distinguishing between the law and uh, to some degree, to a small degree, he continues talking about it in chapter 7, chapter 8, but in chapter 5, and, and he was distinguishing and contrasting the law versus grace, and he says, so we're, since we're saved by grace, we continue to sin, and he uses a word that would be the opposite, you know how in English, if you take a word and you either put like, like for instance, if you get the word important, and you put on in front of it, like unimportant, or, you know, um, professional, and you put non in front of it, non-professional, um, you know, these different kinds of words that are basically, that make a word an antithesis of what the initial word is. And so, what he says there, make anointo, is basically the antithesis of the word in Hebrew that means, uh, that is amen. Now it's, it's in Greek too, but it's they're using the Greek alphabet to transliterate the Hebrew word that you only get meaning for the word if you look at what does it mean in Hebrew. And it means, instead of me it means genoito. So in other words, let it be, let it happen. Um, and so, uh, it's kind of hard to convey it in English, but that's kind of the idea. But, um, so Paul is emphatically saying, absolutely not since we're saved by grace, continue to sin. So, grace is a teacher in the future for you from now in the future. Mercy is allowance for the past. All that stuff that He, you know, allowed you to learn through your practice of sin and uh, to feel contrition of heart about and to get humble before God. And so these are the things that lead a person to, uh, well, like with grace, Titus 2.11, you know. Uh, it says grace is a trainer uh, I mean some translations say teacher but it really is trainer it trains us to say no to ungodliness and worldly desires and live righteous self-controlled or temperate whichever word you you know understand that it's exercising temperance and self-control um, and uh, godly godly lives in this present age while we wait for the glorious appearing of a great God and Savior Jesus Christ so that's what grace is so grace, Paul there is writing Tim Titus, excuse me, not Timothy, Titus, his protege, and he's training him about grace so that he can go out and preach biblical grace as opposed to so much the modern grace that people play games with, uh, you know, still play around with sin. I've even seen pastors with these false, easy believism churches actually laugh about sin from the pulpit because of grace and stuff and because, oh, you know, we're unconditionally... Uh, no, no, no merit by us. We, we, you know, we're forgiven, and it doesn't matter what we do. And and they dance around it. Sometimes they won't actually say it that clearly, but if you're listening close, that's totally what they're teaching, and it's garbage. So, anyway, so back on point. So yeah, I'm going to Israel to really continue pursuing uh, 
getting closer and closer to the fountainhead, so to speak, of truth. And uh, so I just pray, yeah, that, or ask that you pray for me. And um, I welcome your comments and any feedback I made this long video. So I hope, I hope it edifies you in some way. But uh, anyway, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I think I was going to probably do something a week or two prior, but I really did want to make a little, you know, but I just don't have time. Um, fancier, schmancier uh, presentation with this video and stuff. So I'm just going to just do it this way. So anyway, God bless you all. Thanks so much.